FedEx full, we command in the block. Burgundy and gold, got the city on lock. Hustling plays, they don't need to pretend. DC rep is strong and we fight to the end. Command is moving, no breaks, no pause. Hands in the dirt, respecting the call. K dot and admit dot, set the grind. District divider with a city in mind. Join the dance, why? Don't miss a bit. And you gotta spread the words, so shit is shit. Hey, a couple things, man. First thing we said, let's make sure your identity, all right? And like, leave no doubt about that, all right? We still left some meat on the bone about it, but that is our identity, yes, all right? Sir. No question about it. Oh, Frankie Lugo! Yeah. Yeah. to District Divided and another Shades Mondays, the DC Sports Podcast, more specifically a Washington Commanders Podcast. I am Amit. That is Kate out in the strobe light with triple shades going. This episode, it's the post game reaction, it's the common mailbag, but we gotta throw it over to K Dot right now. K Dot, how are you feeling, my guy? Where my dogs at? Light them if you got them, bitches. Where my dogs at? I feel like I'm an A train rave. A train should be here, right Pretty here. Pretty fun, me. right? Oh, he's right here. Oh. He's right here with the shop. Oh, <laughs> let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Woo-hoo. Woo-hoo. So, we already know you guys love this video. So, if you could please like it, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, comment as you always do. I already threw it to K Dot once, but let's do it again. K Dot. Where my dog's at? Where my dog's at? Get that shit! Get that shit! All right, I'm about to have a seizure. I got to turn this shit off. Yeah, that's fine. You do what you got to do. Please share this shit. We regret it. Share it! Get that. Share it! I'm risking medical shit for this! Share it! Hey, it's a beautiful time, guys. So we move on to 4-1 and one on the season. A 34-13, frankly, beatdown of the Cleveland Browns, who they dropped to 1-4. and four. Man, they are stuck with Deshaun Watson, huh? He did not look good. Uh, that sucks. <laughs> I looked at his contract also. It just, good luck to them. Good luck to them. But, hey, I don't see it's any about happy us. endings for them. They're <laughs> 34 to 13. Again, beat down another all-round performance. The defense, once again, was excellent. Let's quickly touch on the player of the game, if we can, Kate, up because I think it was obvious for both you and me. It had to be the guy that was featured in the intro video, Frankie Luvu, who was absolutely outstanding. Two and a half sacks, two tackles for loss, three quarterback hits, a fumble recovery. Could have been an interception if you really wanted that to be it instead. I mean, he was just spectacular. The solo tackles, I think he had seven total, the four solo tackles. K-Dot, I'm just going to listen. There's a lot of awesome stuff this stuff to talk about. Jaden threw a pick, and Jaden, it was probably his statistically one of his tougher games, but he's been so good statistically, it was bound to happen. Yeah. But I thought he still played very well. You can go wherever you want to with this, K-Dot. The floor is yours. What was your reaction to the game? Um, that pick was terrible. <laughs> hey, a hey, jock? <laughs> Jock made a great play on it, though. Oh, no, it was, it was a bad throw. I mean, I can't wait for the All-22 on this one. But look, man, look, man, this shit was fun. It was fun because of everything that we got to see from start to finish. What did we say this last episode? What is this team going to do when they have to face adversity, right? Mm-hmm. How are they going to bounce back? Now, this is not long-term adversity. It's not like they're on a three-game losing streak. But that first quarter, Looked like it was good. That game started off looking like it was like, oh, this might Looked be like a slugfest long. was going to take place. Yep. Right. And then things got settled down. They didn't, they didn't leave too much from where they were. They knew they had to stick to who it is they were and get the job done. Right. And you see that over the course, throughout the course of the game, things just got better. Things got more calm for them. And they start looking like themselves. And that defense, whoo, was that defense flying around that goddamn field, man? Um, Frankie Lou. Frankie Lou. Frankie Louvu, the dude is a beast. I've been saying it. 
you watch the all 22. I mean, you might as well he'd be light up as like a neon gold or some shit. Just run around. You, you can't. You saw it. You saw it right there. Um, everybody on defense could have had the, the their best games. I think all I mean through, throughout the course of the season. Mike Sanders still had a couple really good moments. The tackling all around was very surefire. I did not see a lot of missed tackles in this game. Um, and the pressure got there. They got there. I don't have the full what we sacked. How many times we sacked that? Fucking? Seven sacks on Deshaun Watson. Lost thirty three yards total there. Look, I know he likes getting touched, but not that much and not that way. I'm just saying it's woo. Like it, that. This felt like. Look, I'm gonna watch the all twenty two on this bitch, right? Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna see some things. Like mm-hmm. I I know uh, <clears throat> defensively, I know that. Look, you play who it is. It's on your schedule. You take care of business when you need to take care of business. We've followed this team for years, and there are tons of times where we did not take care of business when we need to take care of business, right? But this is right. But, I mean, I'm not going to deny that Deshaun Watson like a two-pack ass. <laughs> he was fucking sucked. Dude. He sucked. There was no getting around it. He fucking played horrifically. But it's not just him. That entire offensive philosophy, whatever the fuck it is they were doing, I don't it, I thought Eric Bianami was somewhere up there fucking calling some plays for these assholes. Like, it was just, there was nothing good. I don't know if you would follow Eric Bianami at UCLA. Things are not it's going not well. going well. <laughs> like, it's, um, yeah, so, like, I, 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 I'm I trying to figure out from a percentage standpoint, like, how much was it was, like, Cleveland just fucking sucked. Because, like, mm-hmm. even I told you, the score did not help them, but you can see they didn't stick with the run the way they were supposed to stick with the run. You saw they were having some success with the run kind of later on in the game, and we were like, hey, fuck it. Run on us if you want to. We're going to stop the fucking pass because you can't do shit. But I'm trying to figure out where that balances with the ratio. Here, is. Here's what I would quickly say, though, is that we've gone against any and every quarterback on the planet over the past couple of years, and they've all lit us up seemingly. So for this right to even occur is great. And for Deshaun Watson to not have his eyes down the field because the rush is at least he's feeling something, Mm -hmm. Uh, that's excellent so i'm going to go ahead and give credit to the defense also because it piggybacks off of last week's performance against an arizona cardinal squad that we were told was absolutely no good and they go to san francisco and win this week so i'm giving the defense credit here and quite a bit of it and at the same time deshaun was horrible yeah don't 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 i mean like i said don't 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 think my want and desire to watch the all 22 is me denigrating this defense. I mean, I don't give a fuck who you are. It's got to start somewhere and it's got to look like that, right? You right. could have the like a 2000 Ravens defense out there and they would have to do something against what it is that Deshaun was doing. And look, we look over the course of the year, Deshaun's not had great games, but I mean, this was surely a worse performance than he's put up in a little bit, right? So mm-hmm. like it sticks out. So like, no, you got to give the defense fucking credit. And as far as um a starting point, as far as where you are when things start to turn good, this is something that you get building blocks off of to like learn. Like this is what's working. The communication is what's working. This is where we need to start. To like just feel yourself, feel that confidence level. Right. You look at last year, there were not any moments in which that defense could look at themselves and be really proud of themselves at any given point in time. Right. You got to start somewhere and we've been waiting for it to truly start. And it looked as though, all right, maybe they flipped that fucking switch. I'm hopeful. I know things will not necessarily, they won't go against, Teams that are necessarily less talented than these do were offensively, but it doesn't matter. As long as they show, we'll, we'll grade each performance as they fucking come. With this particular performance on defense, fucking A plus for me. Absolutely. And also, I said the final score was 34 13, and they just, you know, beat them down. It really was 34 6, basically, because we pulled right. guys. And then they ended up scoring with their basically final drive, is the way to think of it. Like it was a beat down. Do you remember the last time you saw that? The second, the 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 backup saying I was trying to think about it. It has legitimately been ages, ages. I don't remember to answer your question directly. It's it was incredible. I remember watching the game and just being like, "Take Jaden out. It's done. Like take him out." I couldn't believe I was even having the thought, but there we were. That's how good this performance was across the board, Kata. Yeah, no doubt. Oh, as a matter of fact, let's look at the box score just so you can see oh, yeah. what kind of fucking performance it was. Look, 212 total yards, and I think it was about 160 before that final drive where they ended up scoring uh, mm-hmm. the touchdown over there to make it 34-13. And 13 total drive, 3.6 yards per play, nine penalties. See, So that's where you get into maybe the Browns are shooting themselves in the foot because I think they did do that a good oh, amount. But here's the thing. They couldn't run. We I I said 
in this preview episode, they need to prove to me, the commander's defense, that they can stop the run. I see the averages like Jerome Ford 5.2 and Deontay Foreman 4.9. I, I see that. But if you saw the game, they stopped it. They stopped it. That's what you need to be able to do to force teams to be in second and long, to be in third and long. Kadot, you may disagree, but I'm telling you, to me, it looked like they stopped it. And also shout out the Browns for not running it that often. I would have, but they didn't. <laughs> that, that, that's that, where I'm at. <laughs> that's the crux of that. Is like, like I said when the preview episode, the Browns' identity, they don't want to run the football. Everything is saying they should run the fucking football, <laughs> okay? Everyone and everything is saying you should at least try to run the football. They don't do it, and they don't do it in a way in which builds off anything. But look, fuck them. Fuck the Browns. I'll never think of this. Yeah, by the time they again. ran the ball, the game was basically over anyway. That's why I don't That's put my... stock in the averages. Yeah, But, but, but what I'm saying is, like, I, it, I don't know. The All-22 will let me know how much was the defense stopped them from running compared mm -hmm. to they just didn't want to run the football. Here's what I do know. Fourth and one district divider player of the game. Frankie Lubu makes a stop on down. So, you know? uh, when they wanted to run, it didn't work. Yeah, yep. And third and two, Pierre Strong makes a run. No doubt. Only but uh, once yards, again, so. I don't want to yeah. spend all the time talking about what the fuck the Browns right, are. Right, the right, got it, got it. will let me know what it is I need to know. And I'll, I'll, I'll bring back what it is that I find out. Right. Um, But we've been focused on the defense, which this should, because this has been the performance of a lifetime from the defense. Right. Offensively, this was not. The Bengals game. This is not the game last week. This was uh, this was different, and we knew it was going to be different because, like we said, this defense had certain challenges that other defenses did not have. Case in point, the number one person that we all circled was Miles Garrett, and uh, <laughs> um, I looked at the box score, couldn't find his name. You know why? Zero sacks, zero tackles, not a skip shit bullshit. You're done, bitch. Um, <laughs> I. Um, waiting for a helmet to come out of nowhere to crack me in the fucking <laughs> head. He, uh, he did have three pressures, but who gives a shit? Like, at the end of the day, they did the they did the rotation between Brandon Coleman and Lucas again. I, I think I did have the snap count. Somebody did post what it is the snap count was. Coleman had uh, 17 snaps. He gave it two pressures. Lucas had 20 snaps, one pressure. Everybody else played uh, between 34 and 37 snaps, depending on what it is that you need to do. Um, so they're still keeping that rotation going. And I think they probably said, you know what? We're not going to put too much on Coleman because of what it is that Miles Garrett was doing. So I don't know. If you need the combination of Brandon Coleman and Lucas to have the performances that they had, do what you got to do. I don't give a fuck. That, the, the output was insane. So if you're talking about like an offense that clearly eliminated the best possible, the best player on the defense, made him non-existent on the fucking football field, that is kudos to Cliff Kingsbury, kudos to the offensive line, kudos to everyone that suited up or had anything to fucking do with it. That is the shit. That is awesome. To take him out of the game completely is fucking incredible work. Um, and when we talk about the I alluded to it earlier, I didn't think I'd finish my thought. When we talk about the adversity, like I said, the offense, especially early on, they didn't have everything clicking it the way they needed to. But you could see they stuck with what it is they needed to stick with. They caught plays that got Jaden more confidence. They didn't shy away from saying, no, Jaden's going to – if if you guys want to – once again, I got to look at the all 22, but it's like, if you guys want to try, try to stop the fucking run, we're going to throw on you. We're going to fucking throw on you. We're going to do that shit. Once again, looking at some of the criticism stuff, Jaden missed some stuff. He admitted to it himself in the post game. Mm -hmm. Loved his quote in the post game. <clears throat> he left a lot of plays on the field and begins with me. That's what you want from your fucking quarterback, right? Like that's fucking dope. And he's true. Like, but, it, but even with that, like, I still look at that as mainly positive. We're talking about week five in this rookie quarterback in a new system. Um, and yeah, he's going to miss some fucking shit as we've said all fucking, all like that. But the idea that you got receivers that are coming open speaks more to what it is that Cliff Kingsbury is doing with the offense and more to say what we're seeing right now, as far as this team is the floor has been raised significantly. Oh we yeah. No idea what the ceiling is right. Correct. But Luke McCaffrey. Jahan who? <laughs> Luke is a dog, and I don't need an all 22 to let you know that motherfucker was wide. That open. block was also awesome. The dude is playing some motherfucking football. Man, anybody want to talk to me about some nepotism, all kind of shit? All I know, certain by genetics means some things, and the McCaffrey's got that shit on lock. So I don't give a fuck what you fucking said. He's proving it to me week in and week out, and I'm just looking for him to get more and more opportunities along those lines. Um, Austin Eckler, dude, I love this dude. 
I love him on this team. Look, I did I selfishly want more Brian Robinson? Man, two touchdowns was enough, but I need more yards. Can I hit some of these parlays? But to be able to have him sit and you get good production out of McNichols and Eckler was like, we got a running back room. We got a run scheme. This shit's working. They're plugging and playing, right? There's so many positive things that they can build off in this particular game that, like like I said, overall, that floor has just gotten raised. When you start looking, I know you don't want to get too far ahead. I know the team's not, but that's not our fucking job. We're just talking right. about the fucking team. So we talk about the Ravens next week and what it is. We're at four wins right now. We've just equaled our win total from last year. If we go 500 the rest of the way, it's 10 wins. <laughs> like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Uh -huh. no, I mean, no, it's very exciting times to quickly highlight the three running backs. You had mentioned K dot Austin Eckler, six carries, 67 yards. He had the 50 yard explosive run where he just followed his blocks and then just took off, actually fumbled, speaks to the culture. Olamita Zacchaeus immediately jumps on it. You see guys playing for each other. We talked about Luke McCaffrey making the block. These things all matter. They all add up. Jeremy McNichol, seven carries, 44 yards and a touchdown. Brad Robinson, seven carries, 18 yards, two touchdowns and one hug of Major Tutty. Everyone played great. Uh, they played very, very well. And then Jaden, of course, 11 carries, 82 yards, 14 to 25. Now talking about the quarterback, of course, 238 yards, a touchdown, a pick, a passer rating of 85.1, a QBR, which is again from zero to 100, the ESPN scale of 75.6, which is a good game, a very good game. And to me, K Dot, it, this was, it, it was a unique game. And it was one that I was very thankful to have seen because we talk about adversity. And he throws the interception, and the commentators go, he sped up. He's a rookie. And he, at that moment, I would completely agree with them. I was like, yep, he sped yep. up. They had mentioned, hey, by the way, rookies against a Jim, Jim Schwartz defense, excuse me, they don't win. The last one that won was in 2016. That was Dak Prescott. Okay, so we know it's going to be tough. The way he bounced back after that, when you're sped up, your ability to slow back down, okay, I'll tell you this, not everyone has that. Not everyone has that ability to reset and slow back down to where you need to get to. After that, I could have seen the wheels falling off. He's a human being. He's going against a good defense, one with a proven track record of success against rookies. k he's special. That ability to slow down, bounce back, and then rally the troops as he did. You get the deep shot to Terry initially, and that was just before the pick, but the deep shot to Diami Brown. I'm sure you saw that first and 10 run. It was three yards, three yard gain, and on his way back, and they highlighted this, he's talking to Cliff Kingsbury and says, hey, they're playing man. Give me this. That's the deep shot to Diami Brown. It's immediately after that. And if you want to look it up, guys, you should. As he's jogging back, because he's right next to Cliff, he talks to him, and he was asked about it after, and he said, yep, well, I told him what I saw. Right, first shot. Yep. Took the shot. So I was very, very impressed with Jaden's performance today, even though the stats don't necessarily say he had this overwhelmingly amazing day like he has been having. I thought today, mentally, he showed me a whole lot. He was, I thought, great. Uh, no, as far as development of Jaden Daniels, you could look at this and saying that this was an absolute huge benchmark game for him um and i think it goes not just for Jaden and his play as much as it's also cliff kingsbury and what he believes in him and giving the opportunities to do so so like in the on the first series we had you had the first run for the loss which set up second and 11 second and long and like i said prior if it's second down they're gonna blitz they're going to blitz you and they're gonna come after you fucking hard and you could see on the first series they were very very conservative and what it is they called on second down, which led to a third and long. They were way behind the sticks. They, uh, Jaden doesn't, Jaden's not, Jaden sped up, not looking at what he needs to get looked at, and he gets sacked on the first series. But like I said, you get behind the sticks early against the Browns, they're going to fucking make you pay with the gums of a sack. Mm -hmm. You look at the second drive, um, offense starts with another first down negative play. It was like it was, uh, it was a, either a run or a screen for like negative one yards. Jaden's in shotgun from second down. That, to me, was like, okay, Cliff is already learning immediately. Jaden's got to work through this. I'm not going to give him an out. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to fuck, fuck this bullshit. He's got to get over this. 
So what am I going to do? He's in shotgun. Let's give him a little bit of time to fucking survey the field and then see what it is he could do. The play ended up not being all that much, but that itself, him knowing that they were going to dial up the blitz, Jaden know they're going to dial up the blitz and them telling him, Stick with it again anyway. And on third down, Jaden showed his little special sauce and being able to pick up a fucking first down anyway, which is what you want to see. That's that frustrating part that we keep talking about, right? Is that you can do everything you want to on first and second down at times against this guy or even third down against him. Mm-hmm. And if he needs to get 10 yards and he's doing what he needs to do as far as looking through his progressions, he's still clearly one of, if not the best athletes on the field at any given point in time. And to add to your point, I mean, uh, how about a 34 yard scramble on a fourth and three when you got a Pro Bowl rusher coming at you and Usa Corvo? And it just again, you do it right. You got the free runner and he does a little juke, gets to the outside. That's a 34 yard game. What are you supposed to do about that? Like, but, I mean, he's just, it was great. But I'll even say on that second series, the third down didn't go well because I think that's when he threw the pick. And he, he um, and on that, it was a bad pick on third down. Um, but once again, it's not as though they, 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 you could tell they looked at it, they saw what the deal was, and they went back to doing what it is they needed to do to try to make sure that Jaden was like, look, they're forcing him to throw down the field. I think that was pretty evident from what I was seeing on the, or, uh, just watching the game. Yeah. Um, and Jaden took, took it upon himself to say, okay, I could do that. There was a point also in the game that I, I remember I jotted down because I loved, I loved seeing it. Um, where is it? Oh, maybe I didn't write it down, but I did think it, which was that's the key. Yeah, I don't know, right? <laughs> the, um, <laughs> there was a moment in the game where Jaden runs, where Jaden's on the sideline and he's talking to Terry. Yes. Yeah, and, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, him and Terry are like chopping it up, and you can see they're clearly going over something, and he's taking his time talking to him, and he gets up, he goes, That to me alone. The communication that we keep talking about, like being like the the number one thing, you can even see on the defense a lot. Just the last two weeks, the communication level, them talking pre snap. Frankie Louvu even talked about in the uh, post game, which was the um, they asked him about like what his Bobby's influence or anything that been there. Uh, what is Bobby? What is Bobby's Bobby being there's impact on him been? And he was like, Yeah, man, Bobby's just that. Then he's like, Hey, they're about to do this. If you see this, they're gonna do this. And he's like, Bobby's right. <laughs> Bobby's usually right. And he puts me in the perfect position to succeed if I trust him. And I know that this is what I got to do. And what you're seeing is that level of communication, that level of Cliff putting him in certain situations on second down. Um, the, the, there is a there is a, 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 communicative, a communicative level that's happening right now mm-hmm. and a trust that's being developed with this team right now that I wouldn't trade it for anything in the fucking world. No, I mean, you said that perfectly. And I know that when Benjamin St. Juice talked about we need to communicate more pretty early on, people rolled their eyes because they thought about last season. Oh, great. This again. Yep. Got right. it. But there was a reality to the fact and credence to the point that Joe Witt Jr. is a new defensive coordinator. We have now put together two straight games that have been good on defense. Mm-hmm. Frankie Louvu and Bobby Wagner, Kata, watching them today in particular, it gave me sort of San Francisco vibes in terms of just how dominant they were today. Frankie in particular. I mean, the guy was Frankie everywhere. Was Again, I mean, like that was one of the best linebacking performances I'd seen almost ever from, from someone in this franchise. Like it was, it was incredible. Honestly. Yeah, Frankie incredible. had a day. Frankie had a month. He had a hell of a day. Again, Bobby. Get, I'm talking about Frankie right now, just specifically okay. cool, cool, specific cool, cool, cool. to Frankie, right? In terms of Bobby calls me a parlay, he needs two more tackles. <laughs> okay, fair enough. But <laughs> in terms of you're, you're betting on tackles, anyway. Okay, so listen, yeah, that's motherfucker. A, that's but guess what? Frankie, Frankie held up his end because he got the sack. Mike Sam still held up his end. He had three tackles. All I needed was that. Bobby, the- I needed eight. <laughs> Well, then, you know what? You should really be mad at Deshaun Watson. If he kept it a bit closer, I think you would have got it. Uh, <laughs> bitch, that's, that's, that's the reality. That little bitch, especially him getting knocked the fuck out by Mike Sanders still, and it will give us a put somebody. Man, fuck you. Clean it, I, I, bitch. <laughs> I just want to highlight a couple things before we move on to the common mail back here, uh, KDOT, because I think we've covered just about everything. But wanted to say we're 4-1 and one for the first time since 2008. I'd already mentioned the stat that a Jim Schwartz-led defense had not lost to a rookie quarterback since Dak Prescott. That is now, of course, Jaden Daniels. That just occurred. Um, Jaden, 
Also, uh, third rookie quarterback since 1950 to start the first five games and win at least four of them. It's another thing. Um, also, through the first five career games, 1,000 passing yards, 250 rushing yards. First guy ever. I mean, <laughs> the guy has been incredible. Um, and I just shouting him out, shouting the team out for this electric start. And up next, guys, we're at Baltimore. Uh, the betting line as of right now, we are touchdown underdogs. I'm curious to see if that moves, but we'll see. And that's going to be a really, really fun game. I'm looking forward to it. That was a wonderful way to end that, but I got more. So, <laughs> um, sorry, buddy. <laughs> no, no, please. Please, we're having a great uh, time here. Go ahead. So just a couple things. Um, criticism. Terry, the fumble, inexcusable. Don't let it yeah. happen again. Can't let it happen again. They almost, they could have, if they were competent, they could have got back into it. <laughs> they were incompetent, saved it, but can't do it. Um, outside of that, I loved hearing in the post game, Luvu talking about him and Bobby getting there between 5 and 6 a.m. When they get there, Jane's already done lifting. <laughs> Jane's already done film work. And they're like, what the fuck, dude? That, awesome. Yeah. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Also, um, Fun fact. You like my fun facts, right? I got another fun fact. Love your fun facts. The commanders had eight defenders rec <laughs> record multiple pressures, led by Dorrance Armstrong, who finished with six pressures and a sack on 25 rushes, 24%. The commanders generated pressure on 43.6% of dropbacks, their highest pressure rate in the game this season. They totaled seven sacks after totaling eight combined sacks weeks one through four. Wonderful little fun fact. Now, personal fact. At the end of the third quarter, when Fox was going on the commercial break, they played Rush's Tom Sawyer. If you're not familiar with the song Tom Sawyer, you need to fuck play Tom Sawyer. Just stop the video for a second. Go pull up Tom Sawyer, that drum. Oh, God, Neil Pert, you're a god. Um, when that moment happened, I had all the speakers in this house start fucking playing Tom Sawyer. I was going nuts in this bitch, Okay. Then when I saw that they had the backups and everything coming in, I was losing my shit. I'm tired now because of all the energy that got expended out of it. But there was somebody that tweeted something that I think summed up exactly how it is I'm feeling as a fan. And maybe you guys are feeling the exact same way. Her name is Ashley Hudson. Leaving Northwest Field, and I still don't know how to feel. I've never been this excited, confident, and the constant feeling of an impending collapse has vanished. It's still very confusing. But I'll be questioning it, and we'll go forward as long as possible. That's how I felt as I was air drumming to Tom Sawyer. It felt as though the dark cloud had gone. <laughs> this faith that I have is real. It's real. <laughs> Dude, I want to cry. I have never to, to see the videos of the fans doing the fucking wave. That shit's corny as fuck, but I love it. I love it so much. To see the fans leaving Northwest and they were like, Rah! I'm like, is this, is this, I'm pinching myself. Is this real? Is it real? It's real. It's fucking real. I'm a real boy, Papa. I'm a real boy. It's been fantastic, and it, and it's been thoroughly deserved. We've been waiting a long, long time for something like this. And once again, shout out Adam Peters, just and what a job he's done. That pause in his intro presser when asked about the current roster has saved us all because he knew what he needed to do. And so far, again, form one for the first time since two thousand and eight. And there's a lot of reason for optimism with this one. So. Anyway, we're going to move on to the comment mailbag. But of course, we can't begin it without being introed by our very own Nikki. Can't wait for the Gibbs Bible to have like the new New Testament. The book of Peter's is going to be dope. Comment mailbag time, motherfuckers. District divided, ain't got time for no suckers. Spread the word. Get in line. OGs and new Gs, it's your time. And spread the gospel because this shit is divine. Yeah. Shout out, Nikki, as always. And I'm looking forward to the Book of Peters. That's a great name for it. Um, we actually are going to go to the All-22 review first, and then we'll go to the preview episode. We got Jess Anto with this one. Shout out. My comments have been lost in the abyss again. 
In my personal opinion, I left a dope ass comment after the Monday night win. This is one we read last time and actually reached out to Jess immediately. It was like, we read it, we read it, and we'll read this one too. Um, we need to discuss the Jaden Daniels nickname. The whole abbreviated nickname wave needs to woe it the fuck down. There's no originality to it. We got a DQ, AP, and already had an RG3. So just to be clear, earlier I just said Jaden Daniels, but he wrote JD5 as that nickname. The best nicknames in the NFL were creative as shit. Megatron, The Fridge, The Hawks, The Diesel, The Steel Curtain. My list for Jaden Daniels nicknames? Number one, The Prototype. Number two, The Living Laser. Number three, Kid Dynamic. Number four, The Regulator. Number five, The Franchise. With all of the national media attention in the team, the commies is starting to stick. We need to nip that shit in the bud. Let's start calling the commanders the dubs in reference to the W logo. Share this shit. That is the comment from Jessanto. Get out your reaction. If one for the fact that Devontae Smith already calls himself the Slim Reaper, uh, that to me would be so. Part of me wants to just take it from him. <laughs> like, like, I bitch, think if you're good you enough, you probably could. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you, you you don't get this anymore. We're not we don't we're not talking about you like that anymore. Right. Um, I'll put some more thought into it, but I, I agree. Nicknames used to have mean something, you know. Um, JD Five, it feels so. Say it like a company came up with it. Right. right? Yeah. Well, we you know what? Logo. We'll uh, we'll brainstorm some nicknames, and once Ben Sinek gets going too, then we're going to start saying the senator. I'm looking forward to that. That's still going to happen. I'm looking forward to it. Um, like crackhead Lamar. No. We have some time to workshop. Uh, we go over to Vindo. Shout out Vindo. After some research, I don't want to play the Ravens on Sunday Night Football. <laughs> Not only is he like undefeated against the NFC, his only loss was during a 1 p.m. slot back in 2022 versus Daniel Jones. Do I think we can win? Absolutely. But Sunday Night Football is a no-go against Lamar, especially at home that's what vindo says over there k dot your reaction to that as i switch over to the latest comment mailbag well we don't have to worry about them playing on sunday night <laughs> cbs told nbc to go fuck themselves yep <laughs> um even though it is truly a travesty that the entire nation won't be able to see this match um guess we'll get romo for this one no no is that the 18 now? Yeah. yeah yeah that w- that one will be because they protected it also right 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 so um look yeah, I think that, I mean, we got a lot of content coming as far as the Ravens this week, but I'll tell you this. I'm not going to pick us to win this game, but do I think we can win this game? Yes. Yes. And that's already a lot. That's already pretty cool. That's If you would have asked me this, even after the Cincinnati Bengals game, I think we talked about it. It was like, no, I'm not. No. <laughs> yeah, well, we didn't know the defense was even capable of being good at the time. But the reason I feel good about it right now is watching the Ravens earlier uh, getting that win um, was good for us. Oh, yeah. I, I agree. Think if they lost that game the way that it was shaping up for them to lose that game. They'd be very, very angry next time next week. Although I tell you what, we did say the same thing about Cincinnati. And then we did I, win, which was pretty cool. Did you see that? Stat? I forget who it is that posted it. Maybe it was John Kine. But the, uh, the commanders don't have to get on a plane. To like week 15. Yeah, week 15. Something stupid. That's great. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> We're just on oh, that's awesome. Because <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know before this season that we were traveling less than any other team in the NFL. Like it was a right. Game. That was the stat. But I think after the Arizona thing, we're just kind of here. So yeah, we already gone to Tampa, Arizona, Cincinnati. So no more planes until week 15. Something like that. I, I, I have to look it up. But Pull yeah. up the schedule real quick. Oh, I can do that. I have okay. it. Why don't you go? Yeah. Ah, oh, there we go. Perfect. Yeah, the Saints game. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's pretty cool. That's, it. <laughs> That's pretty cool. These are very close games. <laughs> yeah. That's incredible. Okay. Uh, well, that's nice. That's nice. And so now we go over to the latest common mailbag from the preview episode against these Cleveland Browns. And so we go ahead and begin with Big Papa Grizzly. Shout out. Nice Boondock Saints reference, KDOT. My hat's off to you, sir. So he did. Someone in the comments did, in fact, notice 
the reference. Uh, you're going to enjoy this next comment, KDOT, just knowing you and your sense of humor. Jerry Jones runs his team like a plantation owner and picks his players in a similar way. Do you agree? I feel it was slightly racist for you to tell me I was going to enjoy that. <laughs> I think you know. It had nothing to do with race. <laughs> but, I mean, it has some to do with race. But they like me. What I think about when you're okay, right, through the ask, NFL combine right, and I on, combined on, it with the Jerry Jones thing. Uh, hold on. I, no, I get it. I get what you're saying. Yeah, I get what you're saying. I'm just saying the vibes are bad. Oh, that's so the, if I was white, could you say that? If you were white? Or would that have been I probably awkward? wouldn't. Right? Right? I probably it's, wouldn't. I'm just saying slightly. You're right. So then maybe it was. Just slightly. I slightly. learned something today. Go there ahead. There you go. You're trying to be an ally. I appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know whose square, whose profile photo is going to be a black square come next year. <laughs> um, yeah, man, this shit's just bad. It's bad shit. I still need an explanation. The fuck was it about? Why are you measuring penis sizes, Jerry? Why? There is a comment that has a question related to that, which we'll get to later. Uh, Big Papa Grizzly also goes, I'm a little nervous about the Browns. It just feels like everyone is getting too high on us. Maybe because it's unfamiliar territory, but I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop. I'm still keeping it schmedium, uses the word KDOT, but I do see us getting another dub here. 28-21 with another outstanding performance from our running back room. I'm expecting a big rushing day from Jaden as well. Hashtag share this shit. Hashtag keeping it schmedium is the comment over there. And of course, the running back room, Big Papa, did have a big day. Once again, that's three touchdowns for that running back room. One for McNichols and two for Brian Robinson. And Austin Eckler ran very, very well also. So that was that was great. And Kanan, I want to say you also predicted 28-21, right? I think so. Yeah. So. Yeah, okay. So, you know, a little mind meld with Big Papa. Here's another one. Jess isn't the only one whose comments are getting lost, guys. A train must have been putting in work to miss my comment about Devonte Adams on the last video. Now that I actually looked for, I can't find it, Big Papa. I apologize. I cannot. Did you find it, K dot? I, I don't read. I didn't know. I'll, I'll take a look though. I'm willing to bet K dot will. Um, and then there was one more from Big Papa saying, "Shout out Barkley," and I thoroughly appreciate that, Big Papa. Thank you for that. Appreciate. God it. damn it! You found it? No, it's the. Uh... So I'm trying to do more outreach to our fans. So I created a new YouTube account that says like K dot from district divided. Okay. Um, so that like I can go on like Rio Robinson or ref the district and do comments and maybe ah, smart, 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 smart. Um, but yeah, my whole phone yeah, like yeah. froze yeah. up was doing some bullshit. Cause uh, I was logged into the wrong account. I pay for this account. I don't like ads and stuff popping up on my fucking thing. Um, all right. Hang on. Okay, while you look for that, yeah, 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 another yeah, one. Oh, I found it. Get the fuck. Okay, what did it say? Four days ago, Big Papa Grizzly. Fuck Devontae Adams. <laughs> Dude is a prima donna who, at least we forget, hated on our team, fan base, the city, in an interview that was released earlier this all season. Let him go to New York and play with Aaron Rodgers. What is wrong with my phone? Why can't I? Big Papa, I apologize. I apologize. I'm going to have to figure this out. Um... Let's go to let's go to 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 let's go to coach. I don't share that energy as far as fuck Devontae Adams. I don't think he was lying. Go to coach. <laughs> Shout out, coach. If Becca couldn't make me a Redskins fan in the early 2000s, no one can ever make me a Commanders fan. All in good fun, guys. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out who's Becca. Uh, coach, did you talk about Becca earlier? Should we know who Becca is? Yeah, see, I'm not sure. I mean. I don't know if you Beckers have made me change my mind about a lot of things. Here's the other one from Coach. Appreciate your in-depth analysis for both teams. I'm optimistic about Washington for now, and Cleveland is down seven starters. I mentioned to Ken how impressed I was with how AP stacked a bunch of B-tier role players on your team. Who's Ken? I I don't know. Rashad White is basically just a receiver. Using him as a metric for your run defense might give you false hope. I don't watch a bunch of Cleveland tape, but if you can get an early lead, I'm having Washington winning 31 to 20 B tier role players beat C tier Jags. Just a guys 
but role players have to be able to play within their roles in order to be successful player of the game. Brian Robinson, if he's healthy, best of luck. I don't know who Ken is. That's what we're left with. Ken and Becca. Ken and Becca. So we got to figure out who those people are. But other than that, those are the comments from uh, coach. Your reaction, kid. Just thinking about Ken and Becca. Yeah, me too. Actually, I'm, I'm wondering who they are. I'm developing their story, their life story, in my opinion, and how they connect with you, coach. Maybe they're positive influences in your Philadelphia hate everything life. I don't know. Probably. I don't know who Becca starting is. to get starting to get comfortable over here, which we right, appreciate. Becca, like, hey, you should you should not do things like other Philadelphia fans. You know, your life would improve. We go over to Mr. Payne, 134. Shout oh, out. A right. win against Cleveland and Baltimore will be huge. Halfway there. And support system is important, is the other one. And that, of course, we were talking after the pod about uh, the Aaron Rodgers comments about being a quarterback in the NFL and having a necessary support system to be able to grow and develop as an NFL quarterback properly. I'm assuming that was it. what was in reference to. Uh, but Jaden's got a support system for sure, clearly over here, which has been great to see. Your reaction, KDOT. I just wanted to break out in a song and sing Joe Cockers with a little help from my friends. I get by with a little help from my friends. All I need is my buddies. Support system matters. Like Ken and Becca for coach. If we go to real progress in action, shout out. Who's making those bangers? The stingers are awesome tuna get. I wanted to read that exactly as it was. I'm sure there was some, <laughs> some autocorrect going on or something like that or lack of. But that was great. The stingers are awesome tuna get. Is this AI? So this is in reference to the intro video. Okay, Dot, do you want to answer that? I can answer that. So I have very mixed feelings as far as AI use for making art. That being said, I do utilize certain parts of AI to create what it is I'm doing. Any lyrics you hear, I create. Any music that you hear, I at least laid the foundation for. Um, the delivery of the rhymes themselves I do use AI to help me with that just because I don't like the sound of my voice trying to rap. Mm. Okay. Well, there you go. Although I do know that if I get a little, um, what do we say? Uh, pattery coverage to maybe a train, he'll drop some stuff. <laughs> it might drop some bars. Oh boy. Oh boy. Well, Hey, speaking of AI, we go to blood clot. I asked chat GPT. Oh, what shit. should the Washington Commanders do to beat the Cleveland Browns this Sunday? Response, to beat the Browns, the Commanders should focus on a strong defensive strategy to contain their running game, particularly Nick Chubb. Mission accomplished. He had zero yards. Offensively, establishing a balanced attack with effective passing and running plays will be crucial. Additionally, minimizing turnovers and controlling the clock could be ultimate keys to their success. That's what chat GPT said. I'd be curious to know if it was the free version versus the paid. And I also don't know because with the free version, I don't know when the training set stopped. Wasn't that like September 22 or something like that? I'm sure it's updated since then. It's but... updated. It used to be, yeah, 22, I think was the year, right? Okay. Got it. Because there is a mention updated. of Nick Chubb instead of maybe a Jerome Ford. Or... But I, I, I pay like $80 a month for different AI things. So I'm oh, okay. okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Let it out. Word. Cool. <laughs> so that was Blood Clot's comment over there. Appreciate it. We go over to Ridge. Wear your helmet at. Oh, Shout shit. out. Shout out the big dog Barkley. Appreciate that. Ridge, this about to be an ugly ass game. Over under 14 and a half flags. I got to say, that was a hell of a line. If you pull back up the uh, box score, I think it was 14. Yep. He said it at 14 and a half. Well done. That's that's really good. That is that is really, really good. And then here's another one from Ridge Warrior Helmet at. Speaking of Jerry, who's got the biggest hammer on the commanders? Get off. Oh, Major Teddy. It's a good cop out. I'll give it to District Divided Player of the Game, Frankie Lugo. Everybody knows it's Frankie Lulu. It's got to be Frankie. He's got that. It's that Samoan. I guess I think he's like at least Pacific Islander. Um, I don't know if it's actually Samoan, but like. You ever see Game of Thrones? No, you know that. God damn it. My ex tried to get me into it. I just, I watched like two episodes and I was like, ah, I don't know. Well, I mean, if you need more stuff for the Spank Bank, there's some stuff in Game of Thrones as far as uh, what Jason Mado uh, Momoa was doing to uh, Amelia Clark from the back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pitching it right now. Wasn't that great, actually, looking at it? It was kind of problematic. 
think she was being assaulted. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to shut the fuck up. <laughs> You're going to town A. I'm being major to shut no, up. No, the there was a moment back. where I was like, maybe I should just interrupt him. But I was like, Bail me what? out, motherfucker. <laughs> Yeah, I wasn't doing my job as co-host there. Uh, Tony goes, we miss you, Barkley, with the heart. And I appreciate that once again. Guys, I do really appreciate all the love for Barkley that you guys are showing. So it means a lot to me. I appreciate that. Um, we go over to Prince Anubis. Barkley is in heaven. All dogs go to heaven. That is a fact, KDOT, that all dogs do, in fact, go to heaven. And Prince Anubis just highlighting that. Thank you for the love for Barkley. Appreciate that. Um, and then we conclude. I want to make sure I have not missed any. Because apparently I've been doing a whole lot of that recently. And I don't want to. But we got one more from Pally for Life. And it's a good one. No. Yeah, okay. As far as I know, this is the only other one. So this is what Pally for Life says. And this is after the game is over. <coughs> I really do not know what to say or think. I have never seen a Washington team like this in my lifetime. Regarding quarterback, Jaden is the complete package and most impressively has remained focused locked in despite all the success he is realizing he is a winner full stop and he has everyone including his teammates starting to believe furthermore a couple quick notes to kdot's point a couple episodes ago i felt emotional here and there watching these games things have felt so futile for so long till now number two anyone talking about jahan dotson looks left and right kdot killed it here Number three, friendly reminder, A-Train wanted Jaden Daniels from the beginning, and I was 100% in agreement. Number four, we have a new motto. Light him if you got him, which was great. We're going to keep doing that. Oh, look at him go. Look at him go. And number five, share this shit. Real test coming next week. As Russell Wilson says, let's ride. No, That's the comment that. from Pally for life. That's what he said. That's what he said. But K Dot, your reaction to that? That was a wonderful comment all the way around. If Pally for life could put that much effort in his comment as he does his fantasy football team, maybe the world might be a better place for him. Oh, um, no. That felt mean. I, that was a low blow. That was that was a low blow for sure, dude. <laughs> his team trash. <laughs> it's, been <tough>. it's been tough. <laughs> Sixty something points. God damn. Like, God, God damn. Like, uh, you should just have Deshaun on there. He's, he plays for the performance at that level. <laughs> you just I'm keep sorry. going, huh? You no, acknowledge no, no, he's a low blow and you just I, continue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I, I interesting. Just, I might have made him legitimately depressed. Just it was I'm a sorry. great comment. I was just asking you to react. Was not he gave his comments team. to everybody and all kinds of shit. I'm sorry. I, yeah, yeah, my bad, man. Yeah, you get to slap me next time you see me, I guess. <laughs> I'll be sure to clip that and send it to him, just to be clear. He's our, he's such a great supporter of our show too. He is. He's, about, he's the genesis for the show. That is also true. Fun fact, guys. He's the one that put us in touch to make sure that we were trying this out and seeing how and it's gone quite well. So I think I've kind of fallen apart in the last five minutes of this episode. You have. So this was the show. This was District Divided, a DC Sports podcast, more specifically a Washington Commanders podcast. I am Amit. That is kdot who is on cloud nine right now and lord knows where that's taking him thank you guys so much for listening to today's episode and if you enjoyed it please like the video subscribe to the channel hit the notification bell comment as you always do and kdot let everybody know that you should listen to this pod up until the point the ridgeway helmet at drops a comment then listen to pally for life's comment to turn it off again and then share this shit <laughs> okay share this selectively shit. share this one <laughs> and, and and i'm gonna need to get a cigar so that even i can go light him if you got him i love that i want to actually like the bitch but i know she's gonna take so long to finish and i don't like to like leave cigars half done yeah. i got a bunch of cigars i'm a cigar yeah i like I can't get the strobe lights to work. <laughs> there right, we go. Now it's doing something. I don't know. It's just live. <laughs> this makes you divided, motherfuckers. Share it. Share it. What? What? It's not even big. In DC, we're just hoping that you listen.